Mummies, Pyramids, and Pharaohs, a book about ancient Egypt by Gail Gibbons. Long ago, one of the world's first civilizations began along the banks of the Nile. Travel back in time to when powerful pharaohs ruled over this land of golden palaces, huge stone monuments, and magnificent pyramids. Discover the scientific secrets of mummification and learn about the language of hieroglyphics and how the Rosetta Stone provided the clue to its meaning. The mysterious world of the ancient Egyptians is revealed in the pages of this fact-filled book. One of the world's oldest continuous civilizations began about 5,000 years ago in the land of Egypt. For the next 3,000 years, the Egyptians were ruled by kings called pharaohs. While he was in power, each pharaoh was believed to be Horus, the son, the son of the great sun god, Re. The ancient Egyptians lived in northeast Africa along the Nile River. They called the dark and fertile soil around the Nile the Black Land and used it for growing their crops. Beyond the dark soil was what the Egyptians called the Red Land. It was a huge stony red desert area where it rarely rained and the plains grew. Black land? Red land. Egypt. Nile River. Do you know what this one says? Medi Red Sea. <laughs> Mediterranean. Oh, Red Sea. Mediterranean, Mediterranean sea. sea. And then Red Land. Red Land. What's this back here? Black land. The pharaohs built Egypt into a rich and powerful nation. When a pharaoh died, his son inherited the throne. The wives of pharaohs were powerful too, although only a few women ever ruled Egypt. The royal couple often appeared in processions and celebrations and took trips to the temples to worship their many gods. The pharaoh's family dressed in rich fabrics decorated with gold and precious stones to display its wealth and power. Ancient Egyptian society was highly organized. Uh, there were very honored people. The chief minister was in charge of taxes and the overseeing of crops and irrigation. He also acted as the pharaoh's lawyer and settled disputes. Monarchs were in charge of different regions of Egypt. The temple priest held religious ceremonies. Most people worked for the pharaohs and the ki kingdom as craftspeople, farmers, or laborers. There were also soldiers as well as slaves who had been captured during war. Most families lived in villages of sun-baked mud houses set close together. The houses had few windows, flat roofs, and square rooms with very little furniture. Wealthy families had servants and lived surrounded by beautiful objects. Because of the heat, ancient Egyptians wore light linen clothing. Most of the time, the fabric was white. Slaves and servants who came from foreign lands wore, wore patterned fabrics. Everyone cared greatly about how they looked. 
Men and women, both rich and poor, owned jewelry and used makeup, especially eye paint. Ancient Egyptians loved perfume. They rubbed scented oils on their skin to pr protect themselves from the dry climate, too. Farmers depended on water from the Nile to grow their crops. During the growing season, canals carried water to the fields. This is called irrigation. The farmers grew barley, wheat, fruit, and vegetables. Farmers also raised livestock, such as water buffalo, cattle, sheep, and goats for food. The craftspeople included potters, carpenters, glassmakers, leather workers, jewelers, and weavers. Copper and gold were plentiful in Egypt and were used in many art forms. Egyptian paintings told stories about living people and also about what they hoped to see when they died and met their gods. Ancient Egyptians used picture writing. The inscriptions they made on temples and tombs were known as hieroglyphs. People called scribes spent up to 10 years to learn the hundreds of hieroglyph symbols. Um, the Rosetta Stone was the key to modern scholars' understanding of Egyptian picture writing. Because it was written both in hieroglyphs and in Greek, historians were able to learn details of the religion, laws, and everyday life of ancient Egyptians. The Rosetta Stone was found in 1799 by a French soldier near the Egyptian village of Rosetta. Um, scribe, uh, bread, mouth, water, um, hieroglyphs, papyrus used as paper. <clears throat> Ancient Egyptians believed in medicinal healing and magic. The doctors thought that the heart controlled everything in the body. Plants, such as garlic, were used as medicines. When medicine didn't work, doctor, doctors tried magic. They often used lucky charms called amulets and believed their gods had healing powers. Um, protection from water danger, protection from household accidents... Um, renewed life, sign of life, infinity, protective eye of Horus. The pharaoh and his family often put on great feasts and celebrations with dancers, storytellers, musicians, and other entertainers. They served tasty foods and drinks. It was a time of merriment. Poorer people held celebrations at their yearly harvest and religious festivals. There was music, dancing, and garlands of flowers. The ancient Egyptians worshipped many gods. Many pharaohs had temples built in honor of themselves and their gods. These huge temples contained large statues, massive columns, workshops, gardens, and a place of worship called the Inner Sanctuary. The high priest and the pharaoh were the only ones allowed in the Inner Sanctuary. Every town or settlement had its own temple for its local god or family of gods. Each day, the priest took the statues, washed them, dressed them, offered them food, and placed them back on their shrines. Ancient Egyptians believed in life after death, called the afterlife. Osiris was the god of the underworld. The Egyptians also believed every person had two important parts. The Ka was the life force. The Ba was the person's soul. In order to live forever in the afterlife, 
The Ka and the Ba had to be united. The body of a dead person had to be preserved for the afterlife. Ka and Ba. The bird of Ba united the Ka and the Ba. <clears throat> Pharaohs and their families and noblemen had elaborate burials involving mummification. It was believed that when the pharaoh died, he became a god. Embalming priests prepared the pharaoh's body for the afterlife. First, the body's organs were removed. Some of them were placed in their own special jars called canopic jars. Only the heart was left inside the body. Liver canopic jar, lungs canopic jar, stomach canopic jar, intestines canopic jar. Um, Cloth was stuffed inside the body, then the skin was covered with a chemical to dry the body out. After 40 days, the chemical was removed. Then the body was covered with oils, precious stones, and amulets. Next, it was bound with long strips of cloth over and over again. A highly decorated mask was placed over the face, and the body was wrapped once again. The entire process took about 70 days. The bound body is called a mummy. The mummy was placed in a coffin, or sometimes a series of coffins, and the funeral procession brought the mummy to a great tomb called a pyramid out in the red land, the desert. The pyramid was a huge four-sided structure built as a monument to the pharaoh. It took thousands of stoneworkers and artists their lifetime and millions of stone blocks to complete one. Inside the pyramid was the pharaoh's burial chamber. The interior walls were covered with magnificent carvings and paintings. Then the coffin was placed inside a large stone box called a sarcophagus. Food, tools, jewelry, and other beloved things were placed next to the body for its afterlife in the kingdom of Osiris. Sarcophagus. Um, many of the pharaoh's possessions and treasures were placed in the pyramid for the afterlife. The canopic jars, guarded by their own gods, were placed in a chest nearby. Uh, figures of servants called Shab Shabti were buried along the dead to serve in the afterlife. Inside the pyramid near the pharaoh's burial chamber were temples, storage chambers, and burial chambers for royal family members and servants. When the procession left, the entrance to the pyramid was sealed up. Stone slabs were put into place. The pharaoh was in his final resting place before going on to his afterlife. It is believed that there are many secrets and mysteries still unknown about the pyramids and how they were built. Pharaoh's burial chamber, burial chambers, storage chambers, temples. Today, after thousands of years, these great pyramids still exist. Many travelers go to see them. These people feel in touch with the grand and fascinating era of the ancient Egyptians. This is the Pyramids and the Sphinx at Giza. Many museums around the world display beautiful pieces of ancient Egyptian art and architecture. In some exhibits, mummies are seen. The ancient Egyptians had one powerful wish, the wish to live forever in their afterlives. Ancient Egyptian Discoveries uh, An Egyptologist studied ancient Egyptian history. Some people think that the shapes of Egypt and its stretch of the Nile look like a lotus plant with the Nile at the stem of the delta as the flower. 
The pharaoh held a crook and a flail symbol, symbols of power that linked him to the god Osiris. Oh, when Queen Hatshepsut's husband died, she ruled Egypt for about 20 years. Um, more than 80 pyramids have been discovered in Egypt. The first pyramid was built for King Zauser. It is called a step pyramid because of its shape. Later step pyramids changed to become flat-sided pyramids. Khufu's Great Pyramid, the biggest of the three massive pyramids at Giza, is the largest in Egypt. It stands 479 feet, or 146 meters tall, and contains over 2 million blocks of limestone. It took about 100,000 men over 20 years to build it. The pyramid-shaped capstone went on the top of many pyramids. Egyptologists believe that three Giza capstones were covered with gold. Measurements were very precise for the building of the ancient Egyptian pyramids. A piece of paper cannot be pushed through the stone slabs. The priest in charge would of making a mummy wore the mask of a jackal, which symbolized Anubis, the god of the dead and mummification. Massive stone monuments stood guard over the Great Pyramids. The Sphinx is a huge statue with the head of a pharaoh and the body of a lion. The pharaoh symbolized leadership and the lion stood for power. Ancient Egyptians had their own style of art. When they drew people and animals, they drew front and side views. The artists thought this gave the best perspective of what they were drawing. Other cultures like the Mayans and the Aztecs built great pyramids too. They were shaped and decorated differently than Egyptian pyramids. Cleopatra was the seventh and last Greek pharaoh. She knew the Egyptian language. Although moisture, winds, sandstorms, and tourists have damaged many of the pyramids over time, they still tell us much about the ideas and beliefs of the people who built them. And so there's their ancient Egyptian discoveries.